we actually describe a variety of, of behaviors in this way. Um, one is micromanagement that is driven either by personalities of leaders or their aversion to risk in environments of significant uncertainty and change. One is actual leadership practices that deliberately undermine trust and cohesion within organizations because some leaders feel that by having everybody off balance they have more power and of course that decimates agility. Indecision, diffusion of responsibility, willful ignorance or suppression of dissent and truth are all elements uh, driven by leadership practices or by culture that seriously impair agility. And learning from Leo's uh, perspective in the business world, and we have the same thing in the military, we call it something different, this idea of short-termism, this idea that I can only see this far in front of me and I need to react to whatever change is happening at, you know, in a split second and not thinking through and understanding uh, threats and opportunities as a result of trends, as a result of uh, many factors in the environment that are causing the disruptions in front of you. And you can make choices for the organization that uh, cast you adrift from the vision that you have for the organization and the mission that you have for the, for the uh, components of the organization and uh, you can end up in a place you don't want to be. Uh, so there, there's a, a lot uh, to this idea that um, uh, this is really an anecdote, an antidote to short-termism and allows a company to get on the right path and be able to exploit changes in the environment to the benefit of the company and those that depend on it. To define agility, truly comprehensively. We felt we had to bring together a number of different fields that don't usually coexist. And that extended beyond just business and the military. So a great deal of insights about the organizational aspects of agility came from psychology and behavioral finance and neuroscience. And in neuroscience, one very interesting set of insights has to do with describing organizations just like people as top brains and bottom brains and the two have very different roles and they have to interact and collaborate in meaningful ways so when chuck talks about either uh, the unwillingness to listen to the feedback or uh, the absence of plans in short-termism there is a great deal of insights that you can get by essentially describing these phenomena as organizations unplugging either their top brains or the bottom brains and when they unplug their top brains cultures take a life of their own and there are no plans and silos decide to do what they want to do and that typically leads to either suboptimal or really bad outcomes and vice versa when top brains have a vision in a plan and they refuse to listen to the feedback from their people or suppress dissent they typically get can get into trouble as well